just right. requires the faith in God in our lives to say, here I am, send me. And that's the miracle, I believe, that what you're talking about. It, it's time. Now is the time to do something for God. Not next year. Now is the time. You know, one of the things that I'm encouraging my congregation is, I've been, I'm grateful for the, uh, the president that has protected religious liberty and all that. Absolutely. That was wonderful. I'm so grateful. But if you study uh, the early church and even the church through history, there's never been a time that the church needed government to be on their side. In fact, now I know this is going to get pushed back, but the times that the You're church right. exploded the most was when the government was against them. Now, I'm not wishing that upon us, and I'm not predicting that that's going to happen. It could I mean, some of the things that we're hearing, it could, but we're called to pray for those in authority. That's my posture. But I've told my church that the greatest time is usually airplanes, and I fly a lot back before COVID, airplanes have to take off against the wind. Yeah. If they take off with the wind, there's more chances of crashing. Wow. And so I, I really believe, that's in my spirit, I believe no matter what is happening in Washington, yeah. I always tell people, they, we don't need them. They actually need us. And that's not a pride statement. The government actually needs the church. Yes, they just does. don't recognize it. But we've yes, never needed a moment where they have to be on our team. I'm grateful for the last four years that there's been protections and very. there's been a lot of prayer that's taken place. I haven't agreed with everything that's happened and the language that was used. But it, we might be heading into a new season. But either way, I believe this is going to be the greatest time for the church. Now, I always tell people, you know, I'm a, I'm a type one person, type A person. Uh, I'm a three on the Enneagram, a three, one, eight. So I like to have my hands and, and have a vision and a plan right next to my computer is this giant 12 month calendar. I plot things out. Proverbs 16 gives me the right to plan my strategy. So I remind myself. And one thing 2020 taught me was, is I can't control everything. No. So moving into this new season, and I'm praying blessings upon America. I'm praying, praying blessings upon the church. But if we do go into a season of hardship, or the wind is against us, there are some things that we can control. We can't control everything. I can't control policies that come out of Washington or policies even come out of my own state, but I can control these seven things. And let me give them to you real quick, yes. because I believe it's important that if we're going to make a move, and I say make a move as in push forward, move the kingdom of God, we're going to advance. There's, I always remind people that in the armor of God, there is no armor for the rear end because we are never in retreat. We are always moving forward. And and That's last true. year, I think a lot of people hit pause. And I told my team, we're not hitting pause. We're no, going to go no, forward. No, no. So there are seven things that I believe we can control. Number one, we can control our response to our own emotions. And that's a big deal. Yes. Uh, today, I'm encouraging church people to control their response to their emotions. And really remember what 2 Chronicles 7.14 says. If my people pray and humble themselves. The word humble there means let go of one's opinion. I've got to put my opinion down and pray and turn from my own wicked ways. And then we will see a healing come from our uh, from, from heaven. So I can control my emotional response. I can control my responses to our memories. That's a big deal. A lot of people have some uh, PTSD from this COVID stuff. That's a big deal. Sure. Uh, one thing our church is going to offer in the summer, and I would encourage pastors that can do this, or maybe you have people in your church, we're going to offer free counseling for families Brilliant. as part Brilliant. of our relief strategy, because what we're seeing is the emotion, the emotional stress, the mental toughness it takes. This, this lockdown has done damage to our families, our children, uh, so, you know, even moving so, from working in an office to working at home, being on computers. There has been a lot. Uh, there's an uptick in our city of suicides and a lot of violence, alcoholism, drug addiction has gone through the ceiling. So we're going to offer free counseling to our partners, our families, Brilliant. and we call our partners. So we That's have so to good. realize we can control our response to our memories. We can control responses to events. And that's a big deal. Wow. Uh, I tell people all the time, it, it's terrible to tell someone to act like a Christian. We're supposed to be like Christ, not act like Christ. When I act like Christ and I tell people so to act like Christ, it's almost a change of their own identity. We're to be like him, not try to act like him. And I think there's a confusion there. So Powerful. we have to control our response to events. We also have yeah. to control our response to people. You know, I always tell our team, respond, don't react. Pause, pray a few minutes. The best thing oh, we can do right now huge. is pray before we post online. There is so huge. many people that have lost credibility in the last two months 
by what they're posting online. And as Christians, if we're not helping, equipping, building people up, and then we're caught posting things that are just way out there, I feel so bad because we are losing credibility. This is the time to gain credibility. This is the time we need to be light on a hill that people can come to. Why was there light on a hill? Because the travelers in the dark looked for light for safety. We're called to be that. So we got to control our responses to people. We have to control our actions towards our goals. You know, goals just don't happen. You know, if they're not written down, they're not going to happen. And I'm telling everybody, this is the year to advance. This is the year to get creative. I have a buddy of mine that is an evangelist and and he told me he said no matter who's president we're going to prosper and and he said so he he saw the new president's plan and started investing in the plan and is already prospering so we can either you know put our thumbs in our mouth and hide in our basements or we can say you know what we're going to advance in every area of our life so we also can control where our focus goes you only fall into sin when you break your focus true focus is the greatest deterrent to sin and i think the church again needs to lead the way in repentance in this season but also get focused. We need to get yeah. back. We are I keep telling people we this is not our home. I'm grateful for the home we have. I'm grateful for this great country, but we are kingdom citizens and I need to filter Absolutely. everything through that. So where our focus goes. And the last one is like you just mentioned, we have to be able to understand we control our attitude towards ourselves. Yeah. I control my attitude towards others and I control my attitudes towards life. I'm not going to forecast gloom and doom. Everybody, oh, this is going to be the worst days. Everybody's running high. I got friends of mine building bunkers in Tennessee, and I'm like, why? I, we're called. We're called to. Up, we're called to maintain everything that Jesus obtained on the cross, and we're called to occupy and be light, not run and hide. I, I'm yeah. just not buying in. And I could be completely wrong. And and this next year, I might. Someone might say, well, you should have listened. And but I just really believe I'm going to always, always declare the kingdom of God. And when Absolutely. I read the Bible. It is a victorious, it's a victorious book because we, because he won the victory. There's never been a battle that he's lost. And so we have to be able to control those seven things if yes. we're going to move Five. forward. And I believe it's God's will. This, I think the church. Yeah. Now, when you look at triage, the military term of triage, there are some churches that, you know, you don't need to help because they're just destined to die just because of their position and how they're. But there's going to be, I'm going to, there's going to be a great awakening and the church is going to rise and there's going to be a massive group of God that we've never experienced before. And I believe we're, we're right on the doorstep. I really believe if we can If we can keep our focus above the storm, a lot Amen. of times we tend to be wave watchers and not tide watchers. Mm-hmm. That's we good. tend to react to the, the, to the last splash of the last wave that happened to hit the shore. And the fact of the matter is, if you look beyond the, the waves, you'll find that the tide is turning. And uh, when, when the wise men were following the star, if you recall, when they were going to see Jesus mm-hmm. being born in Bethlehem, uh, you, can't, you can't watch a star during the day. Stars right. don't shine during the day. Stars shine during the night. And you were talking about how your vision can keep you focused and corrected. When those men were following that star, they, they walked and searched all night long. So they traveled at the night at the highest risk where thieves were out on the streets and, and, and the byways and the highways. And here they were with gold and frankincense and I mean ridiculous wealth to risk themselves out in the nighttime following a star. During the day they would go into an inn and they would sleep all day and have supper in the evening time. And, and he would tell the, the innkeeper, you know, let us know when it's, we're leaving. And the innkeeper said, you can't go. This is a dangerous place. And every once in a while, they'll leave the table and take a, a check up in the sky to see where the star was. And when you're following that star of destiny in your life, when you're following the call of God in your life, other people will go to bed and go to sleep and lock up and close down and say, well, hey, it's too much of a risk. But the kings, the kings, the ones that God has ordained, anointed to change destiny, the kings are mm-hmm. out at nighttime. The kings are out yeah. when everybody else is sleeping. And you'll know mm-hmm. in your spirit whether you're just someone regular or if you're a king in your spirit, that you see Mm. the opportunities of God made bare in your life. And you look at your circumstance and you say, well, I know it's a bad time. I know it's what they say what the time is, but I can use for you. I'm following the star. And if we can get that star in our mind, in Mm. our focus, it will allow us to overcome obstacles and procedures of earth that everyone else is subject to. And it was the shepherds who witnessed the king's mm-hmm. arrival, 
when they brought gold mm -hmm. and frankincense and myrrh, and they gave to Jesus the means by which he would escape Herod. And I believe that God is calling us, Rusty, in these days that we're living in, to get ourselves out of the night day mode and start looking at the star and say we are following him no matter what the circumstance is.